What's up, YouTube? Chad here in their beer review. Again, we're skipping around to category, all the way up to category 33, wood beer. There's only two styles within this uh, category. Wood beer. Let's contain specialty beers of the wood age character with or without alcohol character. So 33A is kind of like the virgin wood beers. Um, 33A, wood age beer. This style is intended for a beer aged in wood without added alcohol character from previous use of the barrel. See, they imply that it's a barrel. It doesn't necessarily have to be a barrel. Bourbon barrel or other similar beers should be entered as a specialty wood aged beer, which is style 33B, which is the next review, which should be a really special beer. Overall impression, a harmonious blend of the base beer style with characteristics from aging in contact with wood. The best examples will be smooth, flavorful, well-balanced, and well-aged. And obviously, so the beer that we're using today is Dogfish Head Burton Baton, although I'm sure you knew that from the title. And, you know, it says Oak Age IPA right there on the label. And then it keeps um, going, a wood age marriage of an Imperial IPA to English style ale. This hot monster is tamed by tanks. Time spending in oak tanks, 10% ABV, pretty big beer. And if you check their website, so the way that they make this beer is they make a double IPA. I don't know if it's 90 minute or a similar recipe. It could be completely different, who knows. And they also make what they call a, a English style old ale, which is a 17B. Neither, you know, <laughs> neither of these styles I've reviewed yet, so. But we'll get to that in just a sec. Um, so they they both they're both brewed separately, aged separately, in you know generic you know steel tanks, and then they blend them together, and they're ten thousand gallon uh, wood wood tanks. So it's not bourbon barrel aged or whiskey aged or nothing like that. It's just aged in, on a big huge wood tank. So let's check the comments history on that stuff. So the base beer style should be apparent. The wood base character should be evident, but not so dominant as to unbalance the beer. The intensity of the wood base flavors is based on contact with the wood, the age, condition, the origin, and char level of the barrel, and the type of wood. This category should not be used for base styles where wood aging is fundamental requirement for the style, e.g. Flanders, Red, Lambic, etc. Um, and let's uh, jump down to characters and ingredients, you know, varies with base style, aged in wooden casts or barrels, or using wood base additives, wood chips, wood staves, oak essence, etc. Fuller bodied higher gravity beers are often used since they can stand up to the additional flavors, although experimentation is encouraged. And it has the entry instruction, which, if this was a homebrew competition, you'd have to go by that. Um, and this is interesting because they say BJC, you know, th this can be either a classic BJCP style or maybe a generic type of beer. So, what I would actually classify this as, and it's true, is the base style is a 35. 4B, which is a mixed style beer where you have a hybrid of two styles, which is what this is. I mean, they said it's an American IPA and an English style Old Ale, and then they age it in wood tanks. So it's like a, man, this is an Inception beer review. And what's interesting is I haven't reviewed, at least not to these specs yet, um, we still haven't gotten anywhere close to uh, English style Old Ale, which is 17B, and American uh, double IPA, which is 22A. So... This should be a fun review. We're just going to concentrate on the wood, the woodiness of this. And, you know, plus I've had, and I'm sure you're familiar with um, double IPAs by now, and the Old Ale. Um, we'll get to that as we get to it. So I've been rambling a long time. Let's go get this in a glass and get to reviewing. All right. So I've got the Burton Baton and the, uh, my brand new Spiegel uh, two up glass. Haven't had one of these in a long time. Love this. Uh, so let's just dive right into the aroma here. So. Yes, very hoppy. Uh, very kind of floral, uh, citrusy hops. But it also has a, a huge malt sweetness too, almost candy-like. That might be the the uh, the malt actually. I think I'm getting a little oxidation on there, a little bit of um, you know honey lemon, or well, mostly just kind of a sherry thing. So it is a lot of like. <laughs> um, Pale malt, nothing toasty, roasty, nothing bready, just a lot of hops and a real sweet malt base. And it's 10% ABV, so I mean, there's like a little bit of alcohol in there, but it's not like distracting or anything. Since, um, you know, it'd be too much of a pain in the ass to have three different styles, we're just going to go by the 33A for the to review this. So. Aroma varies with base style. A low to moderate wood or oak base aroma is usually present. 
Fresh wood can occasionally part raw green aromatics, although this character should never be too strong. Other optional aromatics include a low to moderate vanilla caramel toffee toast or cocoa character from any char in the wood. Any alcohol character should be smooth and balanced, not hot. Some background oxidation character is optional and can take a pleasant sherry-like character. True. Not be papery or cardboard-like. Should not have added alcohol character. Like, again, this isn't in bur bourbon barrels, so you're not going to get any bourbon or anything in here. Um, do I get wood? It's interesting because, like, it's so fresh. Relatively fresh. This was this bottle is actually five months old to the day. And I it's still... To me, like, if somebody just handed me this, it would smell like a regular IPA. So, as an IPA, as a double IPA, it's, you know, like a 10 English Old Ale. Not really getting any of that, other than just, like, that huge malt base. Well, although Old Ale should have some, like they said, pleasant sherry-like character. So, all right, you know, okay, I check on that. But the actual wood? I mean, I really don't smell wood on here maybe we'll taste it so it makes it really difficult to rate um i'm gonna kind of split the difference here i'm gonna say i'm gonna go kind of low sort of i'm gonna say eight out of twelve as an ipa as an ipa it smells great as a old ale it smells all right as a wood age beer really not much wood in there all right so let's talk about appearance obviously varies with base style often darker than un unadulterated base beer style particularly if toasted charred barrels are used well I mean, I would agree that's definitely a little bit darker than your average double IPA, and it's kind of an ugly, you know, rusty kind of color, and very, very hazy. Has a nice, you know, really frothy uh, foam on there. As far as the SRM, I'd say that's like a 13 to 17, almost exactly. See for yourself. Should probably. <laughs> there you go. All right, so, yeah, I mean, it's a great looking beer. The, the haze is a little uh, ugly, but, I mean, it's... It's a good looking beer. And it had, the fact that it has this nice of a head and sticking around for a wood age beer and for 10% ABV. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it's a full three out of three for appearance. Even though there's like really no standard. Uh, well, sort of. But all right, so I'm rambling. Let's get into the flavor. Cheers. Mm. Wow, that is a lot going on there. Like, as soon as it hit my lips, just got huge American IPA. Big citrusy floral hops. Um, the bitterness is like that more dank, like moist kind of bitterness. Nothing dry about it at all. Um, get a, a big, sweet, malty body on there. The actual old ale component, it really comes through on the end because... The same with the the same thing with the aroma. I can um, I'm smelling that or I'm smelling and tasting that the like it said pleasant sherry uh, character. The alcohol comes through on the back end really briefly. Slight um, vanilla kind of flavor. Um, otherwise just like, it's a, you know, pretty neutral tasting as far as the alcohol. Now, since this is wood aged and we're supposed to be grading it as a wood beer, am I getting any wood on here? I'm getting wood mostly in the aftertaste. It's, you know, like just kind of a earthy, woody, slightly vanilla quality. It has like almost like a little bit of like a spiciness to it. Now that I pay attention to it, it is getting sweeter, and I am getting like a real kind of vanilla flavor to it. I mean, if you ever had a bourbon barrel age uh, stout, you get a lot of vanilla on those. That's from the barrel, not the uh, bourbon or the whiskey or whatever. So I am getting that. Um, nothing like green or anything. Um, I love the lacing on there. That is fantastic. So um, yeah, nice marriage there of big huge you know uh 90 minute style ipa um the english old ale has like that huge malt base on there little bit of oxidation um sweet sweet kind of vanilla and it tastes like real authentic vanilla that's the nice thing about this beer is like everything about it is like completely authentic it does it's not like 
I don't want to trash Southern Tier, but it's not like, you know, one of their beers where it's it tastes like a liquid chocolate bar or liquid cinnamon roll or whatever whatever flavor they're making now. But this is, you know, it's like a big, huge, sweet and hot bomb. And it's like completely authentic. Again, if I was drinking this blind, if somebody just handed this to me, I could probably, my first inclination would be to say, oh, this is a big Imperial IPA. But it's like super, super sweet for an IPA. Um, but uh, in that woodiness, you know, it's it's quite subtle. So let's uh, let's check the specs on flavor for a wood age beer. Flavor varies with base style. No kidding. Wood <laughs> usually contributes a woody or oaky flavor, which can take occasionally take on a raw green flavor if new wood is used. Definitely not uh, new wood. Other flavors that may optionally be present include vanilla, true, from vanilla in the wood, caramel, butterscotch, toasted bread or almonds from toasted wood, and coffee, chocolate, cocoa from charred wood. But we don't get, maybe a little bit of butterscotch in here, um, and maybe slight vanilla, and like vanilla, caramel, uh, butterscotch, but um, the wood's not toasted and it's certainly not charred, so you're not getting any of those other flavors. The wood and or cast dry flavors should be balanced, supportive, and noticeable, but should not overpower the base beer style. That's absolutely true. It's there. It's more of a background or a garnish. Some background oxidation characters optional. This should take on a pleasant sherry like character and not be paper or cardboard like. Again, I noticed that it's true, and it's a nice, uh, you know, sherry kind of character. And okay, that's it on flavor. So again, it's really difficult to rate as far as flavor. You got to be like really subjective here. Um, so like the wood definitely comes out more in the actual drinking of it than the smelling of it. But, um, I mean, it's not a huge wood character. I mean, like, like I said, if I was drinking this blind, I might not pick it up at all. I would just think like it's a really, really sweet, um, IPA, almost maybe like an American barley wine, but not quite as distinctive, like missing the fruity character from a barley wine. So, um, yeah, it tastes good. And the wood is is there, but it's subtle. So, um, I will say I will say seventeen on flavor. Yeah, um, full bodied, very very smooth, creamy texture, uh, moderate carbonation. It is very smooth. The alcohol is there, but it's you know smooth and pleasant. It's not burning. Um, the hops do linger here. So there's a little bit of a hoppy aftertaste. There's also a sweet aftertaste. And, uh, you know, there's no alcohol heat or anything. It's just kind of, it's more alcohol flavor than actual heat. Although I am drinking this quite cold, so who knows. Um, yeah, it, drinkability on it is, I mean, it's 10% MBV beer. It's not supposed to be, you're not supposed to just chug this down. Um, but, uh, you know, considering it's a big beer and there's so much into it, I think drinkability on it is pretty nice. Let's check the specs on mouthfeel. Varies with base style. Wood can add tannins to the beer depending on the age of the cask. The tannins can lead to additional astringency, which should never be high, or simply are fuller mouthfeel. Tart or acidic characteristics should be low to none and never distracting. So there isn't really much to go by what that that says for this, but um, I'm going to go pretty high. I'm going to say four out of five on mouthfeel. Um, the only thing that's really preventing it from being a full five is like, it's not that it's a stringent, it's just that the hops linger. Um, it's like, I want to take a drink of water after this. Overall impression, I'm going to say 8 out of 10. And even that seems a little high because the wood on here is a little subtle, or a little more subtle than I would prefer. But um, yeah, so that's a total score of 40 out of 50 for the Dogfish Head Burton Baton. And if, this was, if I was rating this just as a, a double IPA, it probably would be close to that. Maybe a little bit lower because it's a little ridiculous and <laughs> very very sweet for a double ipa but uh yeah i mean definitely a fun tasty beer and it's no challenge to drink so if you can find it i recommend it so yeah 40 out of 50 8 out of 10 same with me you know exactly what my thoughts on this beer thanks for watching i'll see you next time next review is gonna be a very special beer which is coming on christmas eve so merry christmas and see you in a couple days cheers <laughs>